So uh, it's called Borrowed Time. It's the Gambit SMG this season. Give a little, but take a little more. The Drifter. The Drifter smelled trouble the moment he entered the bar. His first instinct was to turn around and leave, but he noticed a hooded figure standing nervously nearby, conspicuously inconspicuous. Their hooded cloak was pulled low over their face, but they leaned to the side, intent on catching every angry shout from the crowd of locals in the corner. Tell what's-his-name to take it easy, Drifter grumbled as he walked by. I'll handle this. Take it easy, parroted a polite voice from somewhere under the figure's cloak. I heard him, sighed the figure, but there was relief in his voice. As Drifter pushed into the crowd, he noted who was armed, who was shouting, and who was doing both. Most seemed to fit into the final category. He smiled. History had taught him the quiet ones were always the most dangerous. He reached the center of the tight knot and found three elixnies sitting at a table, trying to ignore the crowd around them. Undaunted, he pushed his way onto the chair arm of the biggest elixny like a feral cat. The elixny growled, but Drifter tossed trust into the center of the table with a heavy thud. Drifter turned towards the crowd. What's got you fine folk all riled up tonight? Take it you don't listen to the radio much, someone said, and the crowd laughed. Places I like tend to have bad reception, Drifter replied. Tell me what I missed. The group all spoke at once. A a cacophony of accusations. Oh, cried the Drifter. Seems like some of you have been spending too much time staring at that fake night. He turned to the Elixney. Now somewhere in this commotion, I think I heard shouting of missing equipment, so I gotta ask, he said. You fellows have been taking what don't belong to you? The big Elixney spoke. His voice was deep and steady. We had confusions with your people. Where was self-supply and where was all supply, he shrugged. We learned and we compensated. Drifter nodded. Makes sense for settling into a new place. Ain't a soul here who hasn't checked their neighbor's tool shed for spare SMG parts. A voice spoke, hey, I'm missing an SMG. But Drifter held up a hand. (laughs) And I don't want to hear they caught any blame for the big night. I swear, it's like some folks' brains just wilt in the dark. I know Mithrax is working with the Vanguard to figure out this whole Vex thing, he said. The Elixney seemed to relax a bit, but Drifter held up a finger. I do have one question of my own, he said. We've been fighting for a long time, your folk and mine. That's no secret. Plenty of blood spilled on both sides over the years. But I hear stories some of you fellows from the old days caught the hunger. The big Elixney shifted tensely in his seat as the crowd pressed in. Drifter leaned in closer, his voice gravelly. Nasty rumor even says you guys chopped up and chomped on the occasional toddler. The Elixney pushed his chair back and lunged to his feet as the crowd gasped. Drifter stood his ground, somehow staring down the Elixney that was a full meter taller than him. Never you're young, the Elixney boomed. Never. Drifter nodded, but the rest? The Elixney looked at the crowd, then brought his massive head close to Drifter. His voice was steady. We old ones. We who have been fighting since the beginning. Yes. We sometimes took your dead fighters so that we could live. It was war, he said, and poked at Drifter's chest with a clawed finger. And you are made of meat. Drifter smiled. I hear you, brother, he said, and looked at the Elixney's claw. Hell, you point that thing at me, all I can think about is how good it tastes with garlic butter. Mmm. He leaned toward the looming creature and ran his tongue over his chapped lips. The Elixney sized up the tiny man, then dropped his shoulders. But as I say, that was a long time ago, he said. We are house light now and forevermore. We have peace with your people. Drifter reached up and patted the Elixney's chest. That's right, he said. And the Elixney sat down. And though it don't erase the bad old days, he said as he turned to the crowd, that don't mean it's time to bring them back. A dissatisfied grumble rose from the crowd. The fight had gone out of them. The Elixney shrugged. Misrax says we are never to eat people again, he said quietly. Drifter nodded. Yeah, Zavala tells me the same damn thing. The Elixney burst into coughing laughter. The Drifter laughed back, picked up his gun from the table, and waved the crowd away as he pulled over an empty seat. Now make room, he said. These fellows were just about to lose at cards. <laughs> I, I think getting lore like this is so important to the world building because this is stuff that would not fit well in the actual game, mm-hmm. like in cutscenes or anything. Yeah. yeah. But it serves, it, it humanizes the drifter a lot. I think like drifters quietly become one of the best written characters in the whole series. Mm-hmm. And definitely one of the most intriguing, like this is absolutely in line with his, his code of ethics. Like he's the guy he's going to play. He plays both sides, but he'll give anybody a chance. Yeah. He'll align anybody if it suits his needs and i very much envision crow one day being kind of the same 
not in a bad way, but I envision Crow being very trustful, like, mm-hmm. you know, like Trister. Yeah. And I think that this is, this is really cool. You know, these are civilians that are reacting. These aren't even guardians that he's, you know, getting calmed down. These are just, these are normal people who are terrified and, you know, rightfully so for so long, the fallen have been attacking the walls of the city. You know, you have things like twilight gap that have happened and whatnot. And the battle of six fronts. And so all they've ever heard is that, you know, the fallen are monsters that all these alien races are monsters. Now Zavala is aligned with the cabal. The Vex have taken over our city. Like what the fuck's going on? You know? And now all of a sudden we have all these aliens just living and roaming in our city. Yeah. Patches flying in and out, you know, like what on earth is happening? 